Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing off a couple of things that have to do with guitar. Before I start actually teaching um, any serious lessons, first thing I want to do is get some stuff out of the way. And um, today I'm going to be talking about, let me pull up my computer. Yes, yes, that is what I want to talk about. Um, I want to go ahead and talk about three things. The first thing is picks. And then the second thing I'm going to talk about is strings. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is sound. Because those are three things that are very important to guitars. So with me, I have a Fender Heavy pick. This is a standard pick that most people use. If you notice, I'll try to do this. If you notice, that it doesn't bend much. It, I really have to force it down and it kind of hurts. It doesn't bend much. This is very much for like rock, straight rock, metal, that kind of stuff. Metal heads use a lot of heavier picks than this. And the other example is going to be a thin acoustic pick. This is more my style. This is a Dunlop wedge cut um, thin pick. And if you notice, I can, I can actually just bend it all the way that I want. It's no big deal. I like this because it gives it a much more rhythmic and bluesy tone to the music, and um, it becomes less about the, the, the feel and the metal sound of the strings, and more about the tone of the song, and even if it costs a little bit in terms of accuracy and clean aspect, it, I think it gives it a much more authentic feel. The second thing I want to talk about is string, um, string thicknesses. On my, on my guitar, which is right here, um, for this series I'm just going to be using this Fender Squire. Um, this is a starter guitar. Almost everybody who starts playing guitar buys one of these. Uh, because they're super cheap, they're okay, they sound like crap, but whatever. This is probably a guitar that most people would use when they're starting off. I know I would. And um, the reason I showed this is because strings. There are actually, I think, four or five different kinds of strings that you can put on in terms of thickness. Um, the point one one is a very thick string. It's very hard to bend. If you notice, I can bend these pretty easily. The point one one is not not too good. These are, I think, these are point one zero which is the gauge. It's called the string gauge. So when you go buy strings at Guitar Center, you can order, you know, point one zeros or 11 gauge, 10 gauge, 9 gauge, or 8 gauge. Preferably, I like 9 gauge. They're very, very bendy. This is not as bendy as I would want it. The 9 gauge are much more bendy, and um, they don't hurt as much when you play. These kind of hurt. The 11 gauge will hurt even more. So if you're learning or you're barely starting, you definitely want to get a softer string. The problem is that the softer the string is, the more often it gets cut. And the big problem happens when people decide to use a 9 or 8 gauge string and use a heavy pick. They cut right through the string. When you're using these kinds of thin strings, like 9 gauge and 8 gauge, you want to use thin picks. Acoustic picks, thin picks, medium picks at, at best. You know. But with the 10 and 11 gauge, they're thick strings that are designed for those thick picks that are used for speed metal and clean cut metal. Um, so yeah, these are the strings, and um, the thicker the string, the more metallic the sound. Nickel mount strings uh, tend to have a very um, even sound. Some of them are um, slinky strings, have a very bright tone. I try to use slinky. I like the bright tone because I set up my sound to have a dark tone, so it kind of contrasts. And um, there's another one, another style of, of string, and it has a very dark tone. I'm not really that into it, but yeah. In terms of brand, it's just a matter of choice, whatever feels good, whatever sounds good to you. And um, even when you're first starting off, you're not going to be able to tell the difference right away. It comes with months and years of, of, of listening that you finally hear the difference. Another thing that I want to mention is equalizer and sound. Um, let me show what I have. Actually. So right now I'm going to use for this series 
my Marshall. This is a very standard um, amp. Um, I think it's a 15 watt, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it has built in effects right there. A master volume. Oh no, that's the clean channel. These are the, the distorted channel, the equalizers, and reverb. So, so yeah, um, equalizers and reverb. And um, basically, the, way, the reason I'm showing this is because of my EQ setup. Let me actually get this over. Good. So if you notice my EQ setup, you will see that I have this bass at less than halfway. This one turned up a little bit higher than halfway, and this one at about halfway. And for my Fender, this is a good setup. <clears throat> I try to go for a very bluesy sound, so this is usually what my setup looks like. On my Epiphone, it looks totally different, so don't even... It really depends on the sound you're going for, the sound your guitar naturally has, the type of wood, and that kind of stuff. I'm not a fan of Marshall. They require too much. Um, in order to get good sound out of this, I would have to turn it up super loud, and I don't, so I don't ever get good sound out of it. I always get, you know, whatever, cheap sound. Um, I recommend people go with Line 6 or Fender amplifiers, um, maybe even like old school PV amps and stuff like that, Roland. I have a giant Roland amp at, downstairs. But sound is also important. You want to feel comfortable. You want to feel that the sound coming out of your guitar reflects what you actually want to say. You definitely don't want to go for like a generic Marshall because everyone has a Marshall. You, know, you definitely want to find something that works for you and stick with it. So that was this first section. I just wanted to cover um, picks, strings, and stuff like that. Hopefully um, you guys now have your guitar and you have, um, you're have you thinking about what kind of picks. These are super cheap. You can go pick up like five picks for a dollar so get one of every size and then test them and see which one you think feels good in your hand and um, if you're super new just see whichever one fits nicely in your hand some of them are thick and hard and I don't like the way they feel but you might you know if you're a little bit more experienced then find out which one best clicks with the string and gets the sound that you want and uh, we'll go from there so the next lesson is going to be on let me check the next lesson is going to be on picking techniques so stay tuned for that one and um, I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff that has to do with different ways to pick different um, not so much exercises but more more um, sounds and stuff like that that come out of different picking styles and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll explain more in the next video. Um, stay tuned.